So the first document, the report on Serbia, provides for an assessment of where Serbia stands on its EU accession pass, but it also provides on how the EU sees the progress over the past 12 months and also, in addition, the priorities for the next 12 months and beyond on which Serbia should focus. The second document that I came here to present to the local stakeholders is the Growth Plan for the Western Balkans, which is a new initiative which aims at bringing some of the benefits of EU membership to the region in advance of accession, to boost economic growth and to close the socio-economic gap between the EU and the region. It is also a clear commitment how important enlargement is for the region, especially in the light of the ongoing massive geopolitical challenges. Specifically, Russia's unprovoked and unjustified aggression of Ukraine has fundamentally changed Europe's security and geopolitical, geopolitical landscape. This is a key moment for Serbia, but also for the region to seize the opportunity and move forward. During my presentation later on, I will focus on outlining what the country has done, especially to intensify and what is needed also to intensify reforms over the coming, over the coming period. Specifically, we have noted that there has been some progress when it comes to the rule of law, but a number of challenges still remain to be addressed. Judiciary, fight against corruption, freedom of expression in the media are part of what we call the fundamentals. And in this regard, while some progress has been done when it comes to the judiciary, more efforts need to be dedicated by Serbia when it comes to anti-corruption on the one side, but also freedom of expression in the media on the other side. Besides the rule of law, Another important aspect is also normalization of relations with Pristina under the EU-facilitated dialogue, where both parties need to implement agreements reached in the framework of the dialogue, and also bearing in mind that both parties risk losing funding that will come, including as part of the EU growth plan for the region. Last but not least, on the political aspects, the EU also expects Serbia to do more, especially more progress when it comes to alignment with EU foreign policy. This includes also the fact that restrictive measures that the EU has put in, has put in place need to be progressively integrated into Serbian uh, approach. A couple of words beyond on reforms, on reforms, sorry, on economic issues, we assess that Serbia has made some progress in developing a functioning market economy, and we particularly welcomed that the country remained committed to macroeconomic stability and economic reforms. At the same time, regarding the alignment with the EU legislation in various policy areas, Serbia has made a number of progress regarding the fiscal framework, regarding the reform of state-owned enterprise, and also reducing the regulatory and administrative burden and improving public-private consultations. However, in various areas, key weaknesses remain, and this includes the need to progress on internal market-related reforms, where progress was limited and no progress was registered when it comes to free movement of capital. And finally, more efforts are needed regarding policies aimed at developing the capacity to assume the responsibility of a future member state, including on sustainable food, food systems and rural development. And overall, in this respect, just to recall, the EU stand ready, stands ready to support Serbia on its EU accession pass. One essential part of, this, of our approach is also to recall here that the EU is Serbia's biggest, by far, biggest investment and trade partner with 58.7% of total trade in 2022. A couple of words, finally, on the second document, the growth plan, to give you a bit more information and insights on, on, on the way forward. So, as mentioned, the European Commission has also proposed to the Member States on the one side, to the European Parliament on the other side, a new growth plan in order to support the region. It aims at accelerating socio-economic convergence with the EU, especially, and 
important for Serbia, especially given the fact that Serbia's gross domestic product per capita is currently at 44% only of the EU average. <coughs> On the EU side, we want to close this socio-economic gap faster with this growth plan. Our proposal to the European Parliament and to the European Council is for 6 billion euros over the next four years, so up until 2027, that will be provided to support the region convergence to the EU. In addition to that, the objective of the growth plan is also that the citizens of the region can feel the benefits of EU accession before accession, just as it happened with the visa-free regime and the reduction of roaming charges between the EU and the Western Balkans. Now we want to go further and propose the integration of the region in several areas of the single market. For instance, a number of examples, faster custom procedures at the borders, facilitation of cross-border payments via the single euro payments area, recognition of skills and qualifications, integration into the EU efforts towards decarbonization of the economy, but also integration into the industrial supply chains. When combined, when the growth plan funding is combined to what the country receive from in the instrument for pre-accession assistance, then it becomes very clear that Serbia will reach the same or a comparable level of aid intensity per capita that EU member states that receive cohesion funds have. Therefore, this is extremely important as first EU support, but also EU commitment to support the country joining the European Union.